Hi, Signature Associates and friends. Welcome to the Signature Edge Podcast, a podcast dedicated to helping you design an uncommon and impactful career in the business of healthcare. Together, we are making a difference for our clients by lowering the rising costs and administrative burdens associated with great care. Engage with us as we spotlight big ideas to discover an uncommon you through leadership, teamwork, and focus on the healthcare industry. Think deeply, commit fully, and take yourself to the next level of performance. All right, Signature Edge listeners, I am here with Nick Miller, and we are going to deep dive into the Signature Wake principle of I will be a difference maker. Nick Miller, welcome to the show. Tell us about your role in the company, how long you've been with the company, and anything else you think the listeners should know. My name is Nick Miller. I'm a senior product support manager, and I've been working at Signature for a little over seven years. I do a lot of different things at work with both ECAMs and Claims XM and managing clients. It's a really wonderful position and I get to make a big impact with the people that I work with and I get to improve the health of our clients' business every day. I love that. I gotta tell you, when I heard Difference Maker and we were gonna have that as a topic for today's podcast, I thought to myself, Nick Miller is the guy. So I'm excited for the listeners to hear from you on this really important tenant. So. Tell me first, how do you define difference maker? What does that mean to you? A difference maker is somebody who's going to do more than the norm. They're going to seek out problems and they're going to bring solutions to those problems. And they're not just going to bring one solution and give up. They're going to be a tenacious, you know, relentless kind of person. They're going to keep taking the charge that they're given and press forward until they find a way to break through and make results that are kind of at the next level. Nick, that was a great definition. One thing I heard you say, well, I heard you say a lot of things in there, but it reminded me of one of the founding members of Signature Performance. Bonnie Severson always talks about, give them what they ask for, and then some. And I feel like that differentiator that you're talking about there. I also love when you talked about being relentless. When have you in your career had to be relentless? What does that look? When, when, can you think of a time? Yeah, I can. So there have been several times where I'll ask a question to a client who may be less responsive because they have a lot of other things on whatever their plate is. And you send three follow-up emails and you can tell that you're not necessarily going to get a hold of them on email. And then you send them a chat or an IM through whatever their, their company or their organization's email or chat program is. You get a hold of them there. You ask them for a quick phone call. You get them on the phone call and you start talking to them about that email that's also in there. And you're just talking about a different problem, but you're also like, remember this other thing that we've been trying to talk about? Is there a way that we could solve maybe for this SOP disagreement that we're having? And all of a sudden you're in an impromptu meeting with the person and you found a way to connect with them digitally when maybe you couldn't have by trying to send them calendar invite after calendar invite. So that kind of tenacious, relentless, just driven behavior to get that result. That's what I'm talking about when I'm saying you're out there being a difference maker. You find a way to get a hold of the person who won't reply to you. That's and you're doing example. it respectfully. You're not sure. pushing them. Yes, living within our values. But no, yes, that's yes. a really great example of how to be a difference maker. But you know, one of the things that I, I, if I was listening, I would think, okay, I think I'm a difference maker, but I'm not sure. What would you, how do you, def- how would you know if you're making a difference? You know that you're making a difference in a lot of different ways. One of the easiest ones for myself is when I have goals set and I can see myself crossing off impactful goals quarter after quarter, month after month, week after week, day after day. So if I don't, you know, if I hit three of my five daily goals, I'm being a difference maker. There are a lot of people out there who don't have five daily goals and they might accomplish one thing that's impactful in a day. So if you really are planning out your time and thinking about it, you can go back and look at your wins in something that you're like tracking. And I personally use like a daily planner that separates out quarters, months, weeks, and days so that I can really feel it, see it, and know that I'm that difference maker. I love that because I, I, is Achiever in your top five, Nick? 
Achiever is in my top five, Amy. And that, that was like a, such an achiever response. I just like, well, I could like feel your strengths coming out in that, in, in that reply. But you know, here's what I heard you. I, I mean, I think even if achiever isn't in your top five, it's not in mine. It's about intentionality and about knowing the why. I bet you know why you have each one of those goals every day. And I love that you have a top five. I think that's really awesome. What, um, what advice would you give somebody who goes and says, you know what, I think I want to embrace this more. And I really want to, that's one of the th- parts of the signature way I really want to key in on this year. What would, what would you tell them? What would you, what advice would you give them? Yeah. I mean, if I'm trying to become a difference maker, I really want to, I want to be able to measure my own progress. So I do think setting yourself some quarterly goals and trying to plan a way to it is so useful. I didn't start out with a planner that gave me the whole groundwork that I use now. I started out with just like um, a method that my father had passed down to me, which was just like, write down what your goals are, like just the same goal over and over 20 times. So I just sit there on a piece of paper. I'm going to like process 20% more claims this month. And I would actually have the math done out for myself when I kind of started here. So I'd be like, I did 4,000 last month. I'm going to do 4,800 this month. And I'm going to see if I can do it. And it really let me watch my own progress just kind of go up and up. You know, I love that. I recently heard on a a podcast, not the Signature Edge, but different podcasts I listen to is really, you should never be afraid to make goals because they're just reasons to celebrate. And I think that when you have the right mindset about goals that, hey, I'm just going to go see if I can do it. And if I do it, I'm going to celebrate. If I don't, I'm going to kind of see why. And really that and make that more the focus of goals than to say, I'm going to beat myself up if I don't make it. Stretching to go so you can see what you can do and what's possible. That's exactly right. Every goal that I set for myself has a reward tied to it. It's not like you don't, you can't get whatever that reward was for like later on in life. It's just, if I make the goal, I get the little reward and I'm not making them huge, but they're little things. It's like, I'm going to go see that movie that I wanted to see. And it's going to be on this day. So I just know that I get to go do it then. And it makes it nice. It just makes it a nice little thing. Love it. Well, Nick, I love this conversation. You inspired me to go back and look at my daily goals. And that's something that's important to me and my team. So I'm glad um, I got re-inspired by that. And Nick, keep making a difference. I, you're, you're known as a difference maker in this company. I'm glad that we get to work together and you do a really great job. And listeners, if you want to reach out to Nick Miller, you can find him on the intranet in the directory, Nick Miller, and he's a great resource for you. With that, thanks, Nick. Thank you, Amy. Welcome back, everyone, to The Edge. I'm here with my co-host, Amy Hennings. Chris is on leave Amy, thank you so much for your interview with Nick Miller. I found it absolutely fascinating. Well, hi, Mark. It's good to see you and hear from you. Um, Yeah, I really enjoy talking to Nick. He's certainly a difference maker. He certainly is. A couple of things that I've learned over the years with Nick is that he's one of those people that has extraordinary amounts of influence within the organization. So when Nick speaks, I really like to listen carefully to his thought process and the way he goes about things. But in order for us to tie into this concept of being a difference maker, can you give us the full definition of what it means technically to be a difference maker at Signature Performance? Yeah, Mark, I'd love to. So here's what it says. It says, I am the positive difference. I won't confuse effort with viable results nor activity with productivity. I will not fill my time with meaningless work. I will work hard on what matters and seek meaningful work. I will stay focused on the prize. There are plenty of hardworking people who are mediocre at what they do. I will not be one of them. As I leave the office each day, I do I have a full day's worth of work to show for it. Man, that is a powerful definition. And when you think about the attributes of that, meaningful work, finishing something, accomplishing something daily. I mean, it takes into a lot more than just being a difference maker at work. However, Nick brought it to a whole different level with some of the words that you guys talked about when he said tenacious, relentless, and taking results to the next level. Yeah, he, that, I love those words that he used. And I told him after, actually after the interview, post-interview, I said that. I said, those were just great, great words because in order to be a difference maker, it takes grit and creativity and it takes problem solving. And those are things that we definitely 
don't really talk about. And that's, I think, a really interesting piece that he brought to it is that steadfast nature of being with your eye on the prize. And, you know, he talked a lot about goals too, Mark. I think you heard him say that. And one of the things I've been thinking a lot about is living backwards. And I am really looking at what does the end look like and how do you work backwards to, in order to be able to, to really make that difference. So if you can write out the difference you want to make, that's going to help you with that grit to keep your eye on the prize. I know I, this is um, a weird Amy thing. I hope the listeners are ready for it. But <laughs> on January 1st and 2nd, I write a letter to myself of what I hope happened on by December 31st. I said, I hope that you did this and you did this and you experienced this and you got to do this and and that here's where you were able to impact. And I, I will tell you, I don't, and I don't, I make, I put an envelope, I do not read it until December 31st. And it has, it, it really helps you know what you're, keep your eye on the prize and helps you really have that grit to go and look, know how you're going to make an impact, how you're going to make a difference um, going forward. Well, I think it's important too, because grit is one of those things that's tied directly to resiliency. And resiliency is 100% psychological. How we respond to failure, how we respond to hard times, challenges, setbacks, whatever it is, really makes a big difference. And often the difference between being a real difference maker and not is our response to difficult situations or challenging situations. So in the case of something going really bad, have you ever sat down and said, well, what's the best possible outcome of this situation? And what you just said is you pre-plan a roadmap and, and kind of visualize it forward so that you always have that true north to kind of guide yourself by. I do a similar exercise in that every Christmas, once we get done with the unwrapping of gifts and celebration, I retire to my writing room and I write out my life plan. And it's very similar. Yours is probably much more creative. Um, but I go through and I'm kind of a hybrid between what Nick does in creating lists and what you do in creating a vision for what's possible for the future. And I then look at mine quarterly just to keep myself updated or make any changes. But the same thing. I'm always amazed at by doing that work on the front end, how it helps me to make a difference in my work on the back end. And when it comes to doing meaningful work, what I really love about it, it's not just pushing through the hard times. What helps is when I know that my work has meaning because I've pre-thought about what impact I want to have, then I just expect that it's not going to be easy. And, and as we go through those, as we build our allyships and coalitions and, and we grow together, it gets easier and easier and easier to have a resiliency or grit, as you put it, to move forward. Mark, I'm going to go a different. One of the assessment questions in the Uncommon Leadership Playbook talks about my work is competitive with the industry's best. Mark, you're you're someone in my life who I notice always makes sure that their work is competitive with the industry's best. What do you do? To, how do you do that? What do you do to make sure that you're staying in line with what's the world class. Well, thank you, Amy. Um, and, and first of all, I think we have to be really curious and we have to recognize what world class looks like. Mm -hmm. So many of us stop so short of world class because we haven't exposed ourselves to the brilliance of world class. So some of the thinkers that inspired Alan Fredrickson when he founded the organization um, continue to inspire him today. He pulls from the past, but he had a vision that was out there. So when it comes to experience in our world, Amy, uh, when it comes to communications, I just ask myself, who's the very best? What are they doing different? And if I don't know that answer, I go, what organization am I drawn to that I wish I could like be a part of? And then I just start to break it down a little bit and say, well, they do have a certain kind of magic. They have a certain kind of mystique. They have a certain kind of attribute I want to I wanna connect with. What is that? When I get clear about what that is, then I'm able to say, well, Mark, here's where you're at now. What's it going to take to get you there? And I just do a little mini gap analysis, and I pick two or three simple steps, Amy. As, as you know, I always break things down in two or three steps that I can begin to take and make that progress of, you know, over time. I never try to rush it because here's the deal. You could wake up tomorrow and say, I want to be world class, okay? I want to be that kind of difference maker. You're not going to overnight become that. 
You have got to go through the paces. You've got to learn to build this resiliency. You've got to learn how to respond when things get hard because that's what world class is. And so as you take that journey, every step, every failure, every success is one step closer to becoming world class. And once you've put in the time and you've mounted the kind of, um, you set the goal so to speak, and, and, and mounted your offense to go get it, then you can begin to actually achieve the results that you've seen and you looked up to and then get better than those results. And that's when it gets really fun to do. What would be an example of something that's world-class that inspires you, Mark? Well, I, we have one here at home. Did you read the latest issue of Signature Moments? One of the things I found fascinating was some feedback that I got from one of our associates. And she said, I had a life's dream of being a published author and Signature Moments and this company helped me become that. Now stop for a minute. If we weren't shooting for world class, two things wouldn't have happened. One, everyone wouldn't have a voice. They couldn't be seen, heard, and felt. And two, we wouldn't have the kind of quality in our publication that is making an impact in the lives of the others we work with. And that translates into a higher a higher level of engagement, more job satisfaction, and better performance for our clients. So when you think about that, that's one real example that I just experienced last week of shooting for something that's beyond average, that, that that's world-class in nature. Moments, as you know, is near and dear to the experience seems hard. And they yes. put, and you can tell, you can feel the heartbeat in it that comes out when it's something is world-class, when they put, you put your whole heart into it. You know, Mark, just to kind of close, I, you know, distractions are an obvious roadblock to being a difference maker. And that's one of the things that I think is a differentiator between people who act make really meaningful impact and the people that don't is how they handle distractions. What do you do to handle distractions? A really good question. And to be honest, I partner with people like you, Amy, um, who help me stay focused on that. I am a walking distraction bomb. And so let me turn this question back at you. What is your process? Because when it comes to people I admire and how they get things done, my focus goes to you. And I, I often lean heavy into your ability to keep us focused and prioritizing the right things because we have a lot going on all the time. I tend to get a little lost in it. What do you do that helps yourself become not distracted? And then how do you help the team do the same thing? Well, thanks, Mark. I think that I have a little phrase on my desk that I look at and it says, I'm doing a great work. I can't come down. And I, I'm, I'm someone who reads the Bible. And this was Nehemiah when he was building the wall around mm -hmm. Jerusalem. He said that he had a lot of distractions. A lot of people wanted his time and he was building this wall and the wall was important to him. And so I always look at that quote when I'm looking at what's next, because I want to make sure I'm doing a great work. I, I can't go and get involved in emotional drama. I can't go get involved in small problems that are inconsequential. I can't go spend my time with people that, that aren't getting better because of it, it where it's just like a time suck or energy vampires. I can't go do that. I'm doing an important work. And that's what I tell myself. I think our work here at Signature is of the utmost importance. We serve an industry that needs us that is vital to humanity and healthcare right now has never been more important. And I think that this company is doing a great work. We can't, we can't come down and do work that doesn't matter. So that's, that's my true North. And I love that little sticky note on my desk. Great example of what it takes to a have grit, resiliency and focus. And if we go back to where we started Nick's definition, right? Because mm -hmm. he's someone tenacious, relentless, take results to the next level. I think they marry very nicely. And so as we think about each of us being a difference maker, hopefully we've given our audience enough insight into how they could do it. Look, we're not, and no one is a perfect leader, but to be a difference maker really takes a mindset of wanting to make that difference, being intentional about it. Ruth Ann Schaubacher says this, each day comes bearing its own gifts, untie the ribbons. And I love that because when it comes to being a difference maker, you have the power to do it. You just simply have to untie and unwrap that gift each day and be that intentional about stepping forward with your best self, like Nick Miller, 
like Amy Hennings, to make each day count. And so, Amy, thank you so much for your interview with Nick, and thanks for your discussion on this important principle of the Signature Way. Thanks, Mark. It's great to be a difference maker with you. Right back at you. Signature Performance is the foremost leader in healthcare administration. Your work advancing our mission is transforming healthcare in the U.S. Signature is bringing together the best and brightest in healthcare. Discover opportunities at www.signatureperformance.com slash careers and be inspired to build an uncommon career that matters.